A new rule coming to Sturgis Public Schools next year. Find out where students will have to store their phones during classes. Heavy rain tracking north of Grand Rapids right now, but we're also watching a strong storm crossing Lake Michigan and some of the threats it could bring to our lakeshore soon. And a northern Michigan grocery store gaining nationwide support after sharing that one of their pride cakes was vandalized. Covering West Michigan to protect and alert you. This is News Channel 3, live at 11. Thanks for joining us live for 11 on News Channel 3. We're starting with a live look right now over downtown Kalamazoo. Our week of hot and humid weather wrapping up, but not without one final storm. Meteorologist Will Haney is in the Weather Alert Center tracking it all for us. Will? Yeah, Princess, storms crossing Lake Michigan right now have a history of several severe thunderstorm warnings, even some tornadoes on the other side of Lake Michigan. Now, for us, these are not likely to produce tornadoes. I say not likely, not impossible, but the bigger threat for us is going to be gusty winds. And as we jump right into a live look at a few locations, you can see temperatures are primed in the lower to mid 80s. We have a lot of humidity. There's even some rain and storms ongoing right now in Holland, as you see there. Uh, it looks like the downtown starting to get a little wet as we look at live Doppler. Some of the heaviest rain right now ongoing across portions of Ottawa, Muskegon, Nuevo counties. They have seen a lot of rain today, over two inches locally in Muskegon and Oceana counties, likely in Nuevo counties as well. Now, this is the area of concern, this uh, almost Boeing little segment that's right out over the Mid Lake buoy and uh, the center portion of Lake Michigan right now. I'll freeze frame the radar here in just a second, and we'll get an idea of uh, kind of the timing for you. So I'll freeze the radar, and I'm going to put a track on this. It is pushing off to the east at about 50 miles per hour, so that does put it at our lakeshore likely within the hour. So as we look at here, uh, you can see kind of the South Haven area at about 1140 perhaps, and then moving towards the Bloomingdale area at about midnight. That area of dark red that you see there that I'm tracking, that's the most likely little pocket of some pretty intense wind gusts. We'll see if they go with the severe thunderstorm warning by the National Weather Service. So generally speaking, now through about midnight farther north, that's where we're going to see some of the stronger storms there. Midnight to 2 a.m. for that middle portion. And then if you're in down, down in, say, St. Joseph, Calhoun, Branch counties, more than likely 2 to 3 in the morning. Our risk was slightly downgraded to a risk category 1 of 5, so this isn't necessarily anything to panic over, but isolated severe storms are going to be possible. I think we could see some pockets pushing 50, 60 mile per hour wind gusts. So uh, essentially now through 3 a.m., we just want you to be weather aware. We're going to continue to track that line and also look ahead at another round of storms later this week coming up in minutes. Princess. Thank you, Will. And to stay up to date on what weather is coming your way, you can simply download the Weather Alert Network app. You can scan the QR code that's on your screen right now or download the app from the App Store or Google Play. Local businesses still recovering from the severe storms that hit West Michigan last weekend. Millam Golf Course was closed to the public all week after those Father's Day storms. Officials say they had dozens of trees come down in the park due to the intense winds. Today, the park was opened for limited play. It's amazing the job that the ground crew has done this week. They rented some big equipment and they just started dragging trees out of the way, cutting up branches and stuff and getting the course ready. So to see how much they've done in a week is absolutely amazing. Officials say the course will be back to regular hours this coming week, but warn players to stay out of dangerous areas that have been taped off. Bell's Brewery, along with Sounds of the Zoo, plans to host a night of live music in August to help those in Kalamazoo County impacted by the May 7th tornado. The tornado relief benefit will include performances at the Eccentric Cafe, back room by $2 Bills, the Nathan Moore Affair, and POTUS and the Cabinet. Tickets are $10 and can be purchased right now or at the door. The event takes place on Thursday, August 22nd at 6.30 p.m., with all proceeds going toward the Kalamazoo Community Foundation. An update tonight after a child fell from a ninth story window of an apartment complex in Flint. Flint and Michigan State Police say the three year old boy has now died. Police say it happened at an apartment complex yesterday at East Court Street and Avon Street just before 1230. Police say the investigation is ongoing. Two people in the hospital tonight after a multiple car crash on I-96. Ottawa County Sheriff's Office say it happened just before 5 p.m. today on I-96 near mile marker 21. Deputies say traffic was slowed down on the highway due to an unrelated incident, adding that a 69-year-old Kentwood man 
failed to slow down for traffic and rear-ended a car driven by a 37-year-old Muskegon man. That Muskegon man's car then went sideways and hit another car driven by a 21-year-old woman. The Kent Wood man and his 40-year-old female passenger went to the hospital for their injuries. Their current conditions are unknown. A chaotic scene overnight as Kalamazoo Public Safety works to learn more about a fire. It happened just after 2 this morning on North Rose Street. Investigators say there were flames coming from the back half of the building and it took about 10 minutes to put out the fire. KDPS says while they were investigating, a crowd formed and a man tried to illegally enter the building. We're told the Kalamazoo man has been arrested. Anyone with information is asked to contact the fire marshal's office. Representative Neil Frisky is now out of jail. He was released yesterday after he was arrested early Thursday morning in Lansing. Frisky was arrested after police were called on reports of shots fired. The Lansing Police Department says Frisky is facing possible felony sexual assault weapons and assault charges. We're told the fight involved an adult dancer at Deja Vu Showgirls. The club's assistant manager did not say whether Frisky visited Deja Vu or if the fight involved one of the employees there, but noted concern for the woman involved. I hope that everybody involved is safe because, again, it's, you know, what's going on is absolutely a tragedy. Frisky is in his first term representing the 107th House District and is one of the more conservative members of the Michigan House. In fact, he's a member of the Conservative Freedom Caucus. Fri Frisky, excuse me, is expected back in downtown Lansing for his arraignment this weekend. Starting in the 2024-2025 school year, students at Sturgis Public Schools will no longer be able to have their phones on them during the school day. Students now will have to keep their phones silenced and in their locker. The school superintendent says about 25% of their discipline referrals are related to cell phones. School officials say they've heard lots of positive feedback from parents, but also some concerns, especially over what to do during an emergency when trying to get in contact with their kid have a well thought out emergency response plan. We have staff that have apps on their phone that gives alerts with communications. We want to be the source of keeping kids safe and all these other things that go on with the cell phones can actually make it less safe and more chaotic and a lot of misinformation when there truly is an emergency. School officials say the school will not do searches to find phones on students, but if found, there will be consequences, which include parent contact and potential in-school suspensions. Many viewers are chiming in online about this new rule. Here are just a few of the responses, both for and against it. If you'd like to share your opinion as well, head to our Facebook page. A grocery store vandal hoped to send a message about Pride Month, but their actions may have actually sparked a nationwide outpouring of support. It happened at a northern Michigan family fair with some grab-and-go cakes decorated with rainbows of colors. Our affiliate in Traverse City spoke with the baker who didn't think anything of it until someone else did. Initially, I felt disheartened, really, like someone was going to say, if you didn't want that to happen, you shouldn't have done it but that doesn't feel right to me. At the center of almost every celebration is something sweet. When we're in need of something quick to celebrate, we head to the local grocery store's bakery section where cake decorators are on standby to help us in a pinch. It doesn't feel like, oh man, I have to go to work every day. It feels like I get to go to work. I get to make these cakes. I love being able to interact in people's lives without being a part of their life. This is the voice of the cake decorator at Boyne City's Family Fair. At her request, we're protecting her identity for this interview. She tells us as the store's bakery cake decorator, she loves to add borders and some sprinkles or balloons or some flowers. I just want to see art on the cake and I'm an artist, so I'm going to produce it. Along with Happy Father's Day and graduation cakes, she also decorated cakes for Pride Month. These are the photos of her latest work she posted on social media. I had already posted that cake, that Pride cake, and people responded positively to it. And they were like, oh, this is awesome. Until one of her coworkers pointed out one of the cakes in the cooler had been smashed. For those people to see that this thing they liked was disrespected, I thought it should be seen by more than just me. I don't want it to be a secret because they destroyed it and hid it and wanted it to be a secret. Not wanting the action to stay secret, she posted the picture of the smashed cake on social media. It just kind of hurt my heart. Carrie Miller is a Boyne City resident. 
She doesn't know the decorator, but says when she saw the picture of the smashed cake, she knew she had to do something. You know, something as simple as a cake was being destroyed. I just didn't feel that was right. I mean, people should be able to celebrate whatever they want to celebrate, whether it's a pride cake or a birthday cake. So Carrie posted she would sponsor the purchase of 10 pride cakes, and she tells us it's gone beyond that number. I've had people as far away as Vermont want to sponsor cakes. It's turned a bad situation into hopefully something more positive. It's an outpouring of support that our cake decorator tells us brought her to tears. Doesn't have to be just about this one type that I'm catering to. It's everybody and anybody. Cake is cake. Cake is a celebration. That's why I created it, so someone can have something to celebrate with. The decorator tells us she's not sure what a store investigation will reveal or lead to. She says what's most important is people knowing there's someone standing up for them. Artists and art lovers in downtown Otsego today for the annual Otsego Artisan Market. Now in its third year, the market is a special event that brings together community members. It's sponsored by the Otsego Arts Council and it featured over 40 artists that sold their original handmade goods. Those goods included pottery, bread, glass items, paintings, flowers, and plenty more usually really love the variety of things and I think people really appreciate handmade things now especially in the day of all the social media and AI that's coming around so it's really nice to see stuff that's handcrafted by people that are in the community very nice stuff there in addition to the beautiful artwork there was gourmet treats food and music Meanwhile, in Colon, the Magic City Grill Fest returned for the summer season. This was the grilling competition's fifth year celebrating everything barbecue. The competition was broken down into three rounds, ribs in the morning, followed by chicken, and then beef sliders or hamburgers. Electric and propane grills were prohibited from the competition. Cooks could only use charcoal or wood fires. The community actually loves this event. It's something that's really, really unique, and uh, Colon is a small community, uh, but they're a mighty community. Attendees unable to cook could buy tasting tickets to eat the competitors' creations. Tasters voted for their favorite teams, and the team with the most votes took home the prestigious Taster's Choice Award. Coming up, an update tonight on the conflict in Gaza. What Israel says their targets were in the most recent airstrikes. Plus, we're learning more after a shooting at an Arkansas grocery store yesterday. How the victims are doing tonight and what's in store for the suspect. And an impressive line of storms starting to work its way across Lake Michigan when it is set to arrive for portions of Amburin and Berrien counties and the main area of concern we're watching, right? Thank you for turning to News Channel 3 at 11. The news continues right now. Welcome back. Israeli airstrikes in central Gaza have killed dozens of people, according to Gaza's civil defense force. Israel says the strikes took out two Hamas military infrastructure sites. It's not immediately clear how many of the dead are civilians or Hamas fighters. Rescue crews continue to comb through the rubble looking for survivors and additional victims. Tens of thousands of people have died in Gaza since Israel launched the offensive after the October 7th terror attack. Ceasefire talks continue, but no agreement has been reached. Buckingham Fountain in Chicago's Grant Park will be closed until further notice after it was vandalized overnight. That's according to the Chicago Park District. Officials say protesters dyed the water in the fountain red and spray painted the bricks on the surrounding plaza. The messages read Gaza is bleeding and stop genocide were also sprawled on the plaza in front of the fountain. The messages have since been removed. Staff have tried to put clean water in but believe whatever was used to color the water is still too strong to dilute. Chicago police said no arrests were made and no injuries were reported. Police in Arkansas sharing an update tonight on the victims from yesterday's grocery store shooting. Police say a fourth victim has died tonight and that a total of 14 people were injured. The man accused of opening fire inside the store is set to appear in court on Monday. Police identified the suspect as 44-year-old Travis Eugene Posey, who was also wounded and taken into custody. Police say Posey suffered nine left threatening injuries after exchanging gunfire with officers. Posey was taken into custody and the Arkansas State Police say he is expected to be charged with three counts of capital murder with additional charges pending. <laughs>
President Biden is behind closed doors at Camp David this weekend, getting ready for Thursday's presidential debate. As for Donald Trump, tonight he's on the campaign trail in Philadelphia. Natalie Brand joins us with details ahead of the pivotal face-off. I'll say it again and again, vote Christians. Before a room full of conservative Christians, former President Trump touted the Supreme Court's decision two years ago Monday to overturn Roe versus Wade. And we've gotten abortion out of the federal government and back to the states. I think most of us are one issue voter. Anti-abortion activists, including Hokoved Torres, say they will push Trump to support a federal ban on abortion, a move the former president has said he does not support. The people he surrounds himself for, with are pro-life. So we are confident that, you know, his mind could be changed. There is a lot that the former president could do if put back into office with just executive action. Alexis McGill Johnson of Planned Parenthood's political arm says reproductive rights are still driving support for President Biden. The energy is on fire on the ground. People understand what it means to have a freedom taken away, especially one that we have enjoyed for almost 50 years. President Biden is expected to attack Trump as a threat to abortion rights during Thursday's debate as both campaigns try to break through to undecided voters. Have you made up your mind about who you're going to vote for for president in November? I've been going back and forth on this, back and forth on this. Trump held a rally in Battleground, Pennsylvania Saturday evening. President Biden remains at Camp David through the weekend privately preparing for next week's debate. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. Lightning starting to light up the camera here in South Haven, and it's 84 degrees there. You can see some of the lightning noted just there. The water temperature, by the way, very warm at about 70 degrees. Those clouds are looking rather ominous. We're going to advance now to satellite and radar. Numerous severe thunderstorm warnings were issued on the other side of Lake Michigan. There haven't been any for our vicinity just yet. Wouldn't be shocked if we possibly see one with this one area of uh, some intense winds we'll touch on here in just a second. One thing I want to mention, the fact that this line of storms is almost oriented from west to east is somewhat of a good sign as far as limiting our severe weather potential. Now what that sometimes can lead to is multiple rounds of heavy rain, something called training thunderstorms. So if anything, this could be more of a rainmaker than a severe weather maker. That being said, there is one area of concern which we'll touch on now. So all of the rain that's across Muskegon, Ottawa, Nuego counties, for example, Holland and Northward, that doesn't have much of a punch with it. Just some really heavy rain and lightning. This area, though, this little appendage, appendage that's oriented north to south, that is where we're seeing some pretty intense winds. It's still probably about 10 miles or so offshore, 10 to 15 miles offshore of South Haven, and that was the lightning we were just mentioning. I'm going to strip away the satellite or the <laughs> strip away the radar and show you just the wind direction and speed here. And what I can actually do is uh, kind of dive deeper into this radar data right here. So those lighter areas of green is what we're looking at. That's radar indicated areas of wind as strong as 60 plus miles per hour. So that would be strong enough to probably warrant some sort of a severe thunderstorm warning. So what I can do here is also time this area of intense wind out for you. I'm going to kind of draw a line. This might be a little bit early, if anything, but I would rather it be earlier than late as far as the timing is concerned. It's moving off to the, uh, it looks like, uh, east at about 50 miles per hour or so, so I can kind of give you an estimate of time here in just a second. There you go. So the South Haven area at about 1137, some pretty intense wind going to be landing right at the lakeshore there. And as far as Coloma, you can see it there at about 1145, Pine Grove area, Pine Grove Township, and then eventually Pawpaw as well will likely be in the track of this. That's an area we'll definitely be watching very closely. So uh, just to look at the timing, I'll try and clear out this bar. Maybe it won't go. There we go. Uh, you can see some of the rain uh, uh, picked up well on radar and uh, as well on hour by hour here. This big line will eventually uh, kind of move in here between about midnight and 2 a.m., producing some heavy rain. And we could see some pockets of those intense wind gusts like we were just 
noting there on live Doppler. But for most of us, I think this is just a lot of thunder, lightning and very torrential rainfall. Some showers hang around early tomorrow. The cold front swings through in kind of the mid morning hours and a shower or two can't be ruled out through about lunchtime, but the afternoon does trend drier. The wind will also be a lot gustier throughout the day tomorrow. Some gusts up to about 30. So another breezy one. It's out of the northwest and with that we are concerned about some dangerous swimming conditions, especially with the low and the front kind of swinging on through here. So not the best beach or boating day tomorrow. Remember, red flags mean no swimming. We've got a lot of folks uh, on vacation this time of year. Three to five footers are dangerous enough to pull swimmers out oftentimes with sort of a rip current risk, especially on the north side of piers for tomorrow. Your daily snapshot, a quieter weather day expected by the end of the day tomorrow and Monday as well. Tuesday is another day of interest for some possible strong storms and another run at 90 degrees. Today was our last 90 degree day, at least for a couple. It was seven straight. Man, what a run. All right, Monday is probably a pretty choice day, mid 80s and some sunshine before the storms and kind of some up and down temperatures in the week ahead. You can see we make the run at 90, we cool off a little bit and then back up to 89 by next Saturday. Well, the good thing is, even though it's going to rain tonight, it's going to yeah. be sunny tomorrow. So whatever puddles or flooding that may happen in your area, it should be soaked up when you wake up. Yeah, you got it. And I'm most concerned with the flooding, mainly north of Grand Rapids, but we'll get a good drink for the lawn and garden farther south, too. All right. Sounds good to me. Well, guys, just make sure to keep those rain jackets handy. Up next, Justin Timberlake returning to the stage after his DWI arrest in New York. What he had to say to fans and Start off with the News Channel 3 Weather Alert Network. All right, me again. We have a new severe thunderstorm warning that was just issued for that pocket of intense wind that I was tracking on live Doppler radar moments ago. So just want to get right to this severe thunderstorm warning for Allegan, Van Buren counties, and the northern portion of Berrien County as well. This is going to continue through 1230 AM. This is for radar indications of wind speeds over 60 miles per hour, which we saw just moments ago. I'll switch it over to velocity yet again, and you can see those bright greens headed right for the lakeshore. I'm most concerned with that uh, area of almost bluish green uh, just immediately west of Gange Ganges and uh, the I-196 stretch. If you are in this warning area, get indoors away from windows and uh, just especially there in Allegan County, right along the lake shore, especially if you have any larger trees, most interior room of your home would be preferred there. Uh, we will continue to monitor this severe thunderstorm as it progresses inland. Princess. Thank you, Will. Justin Timberlake, AKA the Prince of Pop, returned to the stage this Friday after his first concert since being arrested for driving while intoxicated in New York on Tuesday. Here's what the singer told the crowd at the United Center in Chicago for his Forget Tomorrow World Tour. We've been together through ups and downs and lefts and rights. And uh, it's been a tough week. But you're here. And I'm here. And nothing can change this moment right now. Police said Timberlake left a New York hotel restaurant and bar early Tuesday morning and allegedly failed to stop at a stop sign and then failed to stay in his lane. He was arrested and held overnight for arraignment. Timberlake's next court appearance is scheduled for July 26th. We'll have a final check on your forecast when we come back. I'm not. Here's a live look at live Doppler radar again. Just moments ago, a severe thunderstorm warning issued for Allegan, Van Buren counties, and also a northern portion of Berrien County that would include St. Joe and the Benton Harbor area. I'll take a little bit of a closer look. It's really this area of uh, darker red that's moving in. Some gusts up to 60 miles per hour possible with this, that, and some torrential rain, a lot of lightning. So get indoors, away from windows. Uh, take this warning seriously. Princess? You all have a great night. We'll see you same time tomorrow.